Who? It's been three months and it's time to find out how has the Samsung Galaxy S9 holding up and should you still get one with everything else that's happening on the cell phone market? Welcome to Follow Up Friday. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Now I'm a long time iPhone user. It's not that I'm a straight up Apple fanboy, I've just really enjoyed the simplicity of the ecosystem and there are still some apps on it that I really enjoy. However, I hate the hardware, namely the lack of the headphone jack. So when the S9 was announced and it had absolutely everything I wanted built into a phone, I had to get one. Now I've been using it as my daily driver almost since the get-go, and let's talk about how that's been. Now I had a huge script written out talking about all the technical stuff of the phone, but let's really talk about the things that I like and the things that I really hate because there's one that's so bad, I am probably gonna tell you not to get the phone. We normally start out with the negatives, but let's change it up by talking about the positives this time first. The build quality is amazing, seriously. It feels like a very high-end piece of technology that is just covered in quality glass. Glass? It's made of glass. For anyone that knows me, I'm kind of prone to dropping things, so I immediately put this in a case, and I've felt a little bit better now that I drop it at least once a week. Seriously, get a case. Next. In use, it's super responsive and very easy to manage all of the applications. That's not a huge positive as most even budget phones these days operate really well. So I'm not really gonna cover the internals of the phone other than it works really well and it's a nice version of Android. The screen is beautiful. There's really, there's no other way to put that. I thought the Infinity Display was more of a gimmick than anything else until I saw it in person and I started using it. It's so high resolution that all my other devices, namely my iPhone 7 Plus, look terrible in comparison. I also love the headphone jack. Holy cow! Holy cow. Who'd have thought this could be such a great quality of life inclusion? I mean, seriously, do phones need to be so thin that we can't include a headphone jack? Now, in all fairness, I use my AirPods as much as the next gear junkie, but I also like using my wired headphones from time to time, and there are just times when I want wired headphones and I want to charge it, and I don't want to buy a crappy cheap dongle. iPhone. Okay, now let's talk about the thing that's at the same time my favorite thing and my least favorite almost deal breaker about the phone. And that's the thing that Samsung really marketed this phone for, the camera. Now I don't necessarily think that they redefined the camera, but I do think they did a fantastic job with the included one here. I get my flack in the comments all the time for this, but I truly think that cell phone cameras are the future for 85% of people. Like legitimately, most people do not need a regular camera. Okay. Okay, and really quickly, let's talk about vlogging because apparently that's how cameras are judged these days. So this is my Canon M50, which is in its full-on vlogging mode with a legitimate mic and everything else. And this is what you can get out of the Samsung Galaxy S9. Look at that, it's just the phone. How did how did the two compare? You guys can tell right now. Obviously, the camera's gonna do a little better. It can create a shallower depth of field. It's got a huge sensor on it, but it's got all of this extra crap, whereas the cell phone is just a cell phone like it's nothing extra and I've always got it on me that's where you have to determine like what are your requirements and what is just nice to have because you've got it on you do you really need to spend the extra money on a camera maybe but look I mean it's so much easier it's got way better stabilization and it's got okay image quality all right back to the video the camera on the s9 is amazing and I love using it it has awesome built-in stabilization and the image quality is fantastic. I actually wrote that in caps in the script. One of the unique features about the S9's camera is the changeable aperture. The, the aperture is basically the amount of light that a camera lets in. Now on a normal camera, this isn't that big of a deal. You can generally close down or open the aperture of the camera as much as you want, barring what your lens can do. But for most small censored cameras, you can't change it. It's just a fixed aperture, usually in the 2.4 to 2.8 range. Action cameras, drones, cell phones, they all kind of do this the same way. Well, the unique feature about the S9 is it has the ability to switch between 1.5 and 2.4. Now, leaving out a lot of technical camera geek stuff, this basically means you can choose to let in more or less light into the sensor. This will allow you to do better low light video photos and it can give you a shallower depth of field. I mean, it's a cell phone, so it won't be much, but it is a bit. It's basically like having two separate prime lenses 
for your cell phone camera. The camera also has dual pixel autofocus and it is uncanny how fast the focusing system works. And that's one of the benefits of cell phones is the cell phone has a much bigger and stronger processor than a camera. It could, and that means it can do things like have amazing autofocus. It can also do super slow motion and 4K 60 frames per second, closing out some really, really awesome camera specs. Seriously, this camera does not do that and you can replace your camera if you don't do things like make videos all the time. And even then, it is a great travel camera. But I said earlier there was a potential deal breaker about the camera, so let's talk about it. If you use a Mac to edit your photos and videos, congratulations! You now have an extra step in your processing. For some reason, there's a picture profile that's added to the S9 when you edit on a Mac, and this picture profile turns everything super red. Now, I'll leave a link in the description for a video that can help you fix this, but seriously, it is a pain in the butt to have to fix every single video slash photo you take if you wanna correct the profile. Now, if you don't mind doing this, I personally don't because the footage looks awesome out of something that I always have with me, then awesome, but if you use a Mac and don't wanna process your images that much, then you're gonna to have to skip the S9. So after three months of constant use, what are my thoughts? I mean, frankly, the S9 is amazing. I never thought I'd leave the iPhone and the S9 makes me miss it, not in the slightest. If you really wanna have a nice, portable video platform, remembering everything I said, I would highly recommend the S9. It's basically a portable computer slash vlogging camera setup slash mobile content creation platform slash audio platform. It is almost like the perfect device. It's everything somebody could want. It's really, really awesome. Thanks for watching.